Welcome to today's overview on Unified Talk, built into many of the Dream Machines and many of the other ubiquity kind of gateway all-in-one equipment. Now, currently we are using the UDM Pro, excuse me, which is the Ubiquity Dream Machine Pro. Now, this uh, Dream Machine here, as you can see, you can embed all sorts of different applications into it, including Protect, Network Access, and more. Today, we'll just be going over the Unified Talk because I find it to be a little interesting um, just how it's built out. It's definitely simple, very easy to use. However, it does lack a few features. And the whole point of today's video is kind of just seeing how it works and maybe it's a good fit for you. Now, as you can see here, we are at our Unified Talk dashboard. We can get our WAN IP address, it gives us our gateway IP, active users, and if you haven't already noticed, each of these green rings indicates that a phone currently on, you know, linked up on Unified Talk, I should say, is active, ready to go, and available for calls. Now, for example, if you see my green ring right here, let's say I want to pick up the phone. And... Shit. I'll do mine. Hold on here. Now, if I start to call, as you can see, we got that blue ring pulsating, and there goes my phone, indicating that there is currently an active call with that user. And the three of these, because they have active phones, will be, how do I say this? All their statuses will be updated, I should say. Um, now, the two here, one of them is linked to a phone that's currently not online. However, the other one is linked to our ATA device. So, I did pick up all of these phones from a recent trip, which I'll probably be covering here soon. You can also check it out over Instagram, uh, yeehaw, it's Jake, underscore V2. Um, however, the ATA can still receive and send calls. Your only issue is that you won't be able to see the active status. It doesn't function like a real VoIP phone. It's more of an adapter. So... If we take a look here, let's just head over to Assignments. Now, as you can see, we have all of our devices right here. For example, you know, Aiden's phone is active. We have our ATA device I was just talking about right here. My phone that we just made a call from. And then Crota's phone right here. You can see the device version. And when they are, when it is available for an update, you'll be able to click right here, update it right on the spot. You can also manage all of your from here and then if we go over to groups you can see that you can manage different call groups as well for example if I want to make a new group make it you know, group one I can assign a group number if I have one or multiple numbers so that they will all receive the same call and call outbound with that number you can also do call handling so similar to uh, not ring attacks, but when you have ring groups, for example, in free PBX, you can choose to either do simultaneous, call hunting, depending on the status, things like that. This one's a lot more simple, and you either have simultaneous, where everyone gets the call at the same time, or you have sequential, where each person in the group will ring at once. So it'll start with Aiden, it'll then go to our guest user after a certain amount of time, then Crota, and so forth. And once an answer calls, you know, maybe we didn't pick up in time, maybe the team's unavailable, whatever it may be for your company or just your home, you can choose what to do here. So if you want to transfer to a smart attendant, which we'll get into here shortly, if you just want to drop the call right then and there for whatever strange reason, or if you just want to send it to voicemail, you can go with that. From here, you can also choose where to send it to, essentially whose voicemail box. And then finally, you can choose a ring back. So for right now, we, I was playing with the settings earlier, we got jazz. We got piano, electronic, all sorts of different things. And we can upload additional ring backs if we do wish. Now, if we exit out of here, we can also create new users if we so please. We can assign them numbers and a custom extension, things of that nature. Or we can go in here and we can manage, okay, you know, my extensions one, phone design test, which we'll get into here in a moment as well, different emails. And this will also pull in both from your 
uh, Dream Machine users, as well as Unify Identity. So if you do have them mixed up, um, if you're using both local and identity source users, you want to keep an eye out for that as, you know, sometimes it can get confusing, especially when you have, you know, one person with two different accounts. Depends on your layout. Um, I know mine's a little messy more just because of how much I've been screwing with it. Um, but yeah, so very uh, straightforward, very easy to use. And when new devices show up as well, you can easily just, you know, sign them right here. <laughs> um, English is not my strong suit today. Anyways, if we go over to engagement. We can see here from our main home, we have phone number selected. We have which, you know, we can select multiple numbers if we wish. The uh, basically call route type. Essentially what this is, is kind of like a drag and drop. Well, Twilio has something similar, but you can essentially configure your IVR settings all right here. So, for example, right now our main home phone number is not configured. So when we call it, it's essentially just going to immediately drop the call because it doesn't know what else to do. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if we want to go add a new one, we can do key press prompt, press one for yes. Let it process the audio. So then, right then and there, that essentially embeds an audio file for a prompt. And then, okay, if they press 1, maybe we want it to ring me, for example. And then we can move on from there. So, we'll remove this chain. Maybe we want to do play audio if we want to do it on our schedule. So, okay, for example, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We'll save that. During business hours, we want it to, you know, ring me. During non-business hours, we want it to go to voicemail on my voicemail. And then it's as easy as apply changes, and they're done right then and there. Oh, yeah, we'll leave that. That's fine. So now that it's saved, we can immediately start receiving calls on that number, and it'll route just like that. We also have the feature of SMS. Now, currently, I am not configured to send outbound SMS because I've not completed the A2C uh, Let's say it's a DL10 registration. Essentially, I've not completed additional registration to send outbound text messages. But we can see them. So, for example, here we have a message. Uwu from my cell phone. Yeah, there it is. A2P10 DLC registration. And then, if we want to go over to system log, this is where you can view a lot of your call logs or if any of the phones are having issues. For example, here's all sorts of calls that we've received, sent. Mm -hmm. We can open the recording on them. We can view information, call flow, what happened. It's similar to the protect layout. And then we can also view the recording. And sometimes this will not be generated. It depends on the call and what your configuration is. There is also transcription as well, so long as you're using unified talk numbers. You can outsource your numbers from Twilio, VoIP MS, uh, whatever it may be but you won't get all the full features of the Unified Talk setup. Once again, we can do our SMS messages right here, and then we can also view critical things. So, you know, I've made changes to our smart attendant. I've opened Unified Talk. This can all be configured also from your dream machine. You can go into devices as well. So, you know, my phone was ready to update. Another phone was to the sign after being detected for adoption, things like that. Telephony, nothing here so far. I have not figured out exactly what this is for um, because, you know, all your calls and setting or SMS, I should say, are in a different section. So this may be, you know, used in the future or maybe this is for critical events. I just have yet to get. I'm not too sure just yet. And then billing you have here. So each time you purchase, remove numbers, things like that, you'll have what goes on right here. Better for accounting or, you know, if you want to keep track, especially in large staff environments. And finally, we have admin activity. So those who have made changes in Unified Talk, everything will uh, be right here. So you can see, once again, I've opened Unified Talk via the web, or I've changed one of our smart attendance settings. Finally, here, under our actual talk settings, you can see I am currently still using the trial. Probably will go forward with it, but it's, it's been a pretty fun to uh, mess with, actually. And then we also have assigned, unassigned, so assigned means that 
essentially these users will be receiving the calls. It's been assigned to someone or a group or whatever it may be. And unassigned means it is not in use yet. So while you still own that phone or the phone number, I should say, uh, you will not receive or send calls. And it's essentially not configured. That is the best way to put it. You can do your purchase date. And with each number, you have 3,000 minutes. The other thing to note as well is Unified Talk doesn't necessarily have a standard limiter. Now, this is not to promote, you know, excessive outbound spam calls and violating the uh, Telephone Consumer Protection Act, TCPA, yes. Um, but what this is, is especially if you have a very busy sales or service team, you may want a lot of numbers, a lot of minutes, things like that. So you'll want to keep this in mind. You can perform one call each second through Unify Talk, make an unlimited number of calls, but you'll have to keep in mind the amount of minutes you're using as well as how many numbers you have in your pool. You can also port in numbers and you can purchase them directly from Unify Talk. Now, the other thing to note is as well, I have yet to see outbound porting. You can port in the Unify Talk, but if you no longer want that number or if you want to put it back into maybe your cell phone, whatever it may be, um, you're most likely going to be SOL. I'm sure you can open a support ticket with Unify if it is absolutely necessary to get that number back, but you'll want to keep that in mind that if it's maybe a critical number, you probably don't want to port it over just yet. Maybe get a couple numbers and add them into your call chain. So go over to porting. Once again, you can configure if you have Twilio numbers, other carriers, things like that. You also have organization. So for example, here, we have our business address, which I'm obviously going to blotch out. I messed around with this a little bit. Uh, wasn't able to fully complete it just yet because Duke is in progress. Um, however, you have CNAME branded calling, so you can manage outbound calls. Maybe if you want your company name to show up, um, or you can do stir shake and trusted calling. So if you want a full attestation of A for those advanced users and telephony admins out there, um, you can enforce that here once your business profile has been registered and you can manage your A2P10 DLC registration for SMS here. We go over to call settings. We can define the default ring back. So all of our, you know, essentially when it's ringing a phone, jazz will be played. Otherwise, if you're on hold, your standard hold music will be uh, placed there. And then you have uploading custom files and you can create, you know, custom audios with repeating messages such as please leave a voicemail after the beep, please leave a voicemail after the beep, things like that. Now we do have call recording enabled. You can define default area codes for outbound calling as well if it's not defined already. Or say if your UDM spontaneously combusts for whatever reason, you also have failover redirect numbers if it needs to go to an additional call center or an additional endpoint. You also have call parking, which I have messed with a bit. Um, it doesn't seem fully built out for call parking just yet. And you can also define call blocking rules if you're getting those pesky scammers, spammers, or if you just have that seven-year-old who keeps wanting to call your business number for whatever reason. Next, we have voicemail over here. So we can define, enable, uh, excuse me, we can enable and disable voicemail here. We can enable and de uh, disable voicemail instructions. So if you want instructions to play back to the caller, you know, please do voicemail after the beat, press one, things like that. You can enable it here. And you can also enable or disable your timeout here. So if you want it to go up to 60 seconds before it ends the call because it's not hearing anything, or if you want it to be as short as five seconds. You can also upload global contacts here. So this is helpful, especially if you have a CRM like Call Tools or HubSpot. You can upload all of your contacts here, know who's calling, things like that. However, they unfortunately do not exactly have a uh, caller ID database available just yet. So you can't hook it up to an external database or have it queried like a MySQL server just yet for uh, contacts. Also here, you have your phone designer. As you can see here, we had a little bit of fun screwing with it. So if we go over to edit, we can change our name. We can see who it applies to. We can define custom names or excuse me, custom wallpapers. We want dancing goose if we want the fish tape for the ATM for whatever reason. And we can also define it based on landscape or portrait. And what this means is your landscape will be your phone touch max devices, which I've got on my desk. Your standard phone touches will take the portrait wallpaper. So maybe you want, you know, a Mustang for your portrait devices, but you want a fish taped to an ATM for your landscape executives. There you go. 
You can also upload custom ringtones. I just threw together something I liked in FL Studio. Toxic Biohazard kind of slaps. If you want to define certain things, such as maybe only allowing your users to access protect and access or only identity, you can define it here. You can also define certain settings, um, whether or not you want them to lock the phone or if they should be able to do device updates directly from the phone without your interaction per se. Um, you can also change your text color on your lock screen. As you can see here, we have previews of that. 24 versus you know 12 hour time, call waiting, and you can also reject incoming intercom calls. So if this phone should not be receiving intercom calls, you can define that right here. The reason for intercom is maybe you need to speak to someone on the other line immediately. You can define that here, but it will automatically answer. So it's not necessarily asking you whether or not you want to use the intercom. So you want to keep that in mind, especially in larger environments. You can also define emergency calling, which when you do first set up emergency call, or excuse me, when you first set up Unify Talk, you will need to define everything here. God forbid you do have to call 911, they'll immediately know where you're at as long as that primary address is correct and you won't get a fee for it. Then you also have notifications here. So if you want to send Slack messages, if incoming calls failed, new SMS messages, or if a new voicemail is available, you can send also Microsoft Teams or just over email. Then finally, in the system section, you can define kind of your administrator style setup if you want to choose your theme, export certain settings, things like that. You can also define third-party SIP providers right here. Just as a little uh, wrap up here, I did want to show you all real quick. We go back to our assignments here. As you can see, one of my phones has been reset. I reset the one at my desk. So if we go ahead here, we assign that device. And we'll assign it right to me. We hit assign. And just like that, our phone has been provisioned and it is ready to go for calls. Just like that. Pretty much easy as a touch of a button. Once Unify, your dream machine, or, you know, those big boys that are, what, like 10 grand, um, see everything ready to go, you can easily start calls right then and there on that phone and get started as easy as one, two, three. Feel free to leave me any questions, concerns, like this button, or, yeah, like this button. Um, and if you guys have any questions or whatever about Ubiquity, Ubiquity Talk, be sure to let me know. I will try my best to answer any and all questions I can. Just keep in mind that uh, I don't always have the solutions to those answers. So stay tuned and uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Have yourselves a wonderful night.